have completed citric acid cycle and now it's time to discuss the regulation of this cycle correct so as we discussed in glycolysis the regulatory pathways are those reactions which have high negative delta g's correct and i hope you all remember this funda okay so uh, this chart shows or this table shows the overview of thermodynamics of every reaction of citric acid cycle showing delta g's of every reaction correct and through this table you might get an idea that reaction 1 3 and 4 these are the regulatory steps so enzyme catalyzing these steps play a control points in citric acid cycle so let's discuss one by one on the right side of this slide there is a overall view of the citric acid cycle showing all the intermediate and product forms in and uh, by clearly de de uh, by clear demarcation of negative and positive regulators of these steps correct so the primary control points those with large negative delta g's obviously these are allosteric enzymes so the first enzyme which we talk about is isocitrate dehydrogenase catalyzing conversion of isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate correct so the activator of this enzyme is ADP, isocitrate, NAD+, magnesium ion and calcium ion and inhibitor is NADH and ATP. Always remember one point. When citric acid cycle, when you need the citric acid cycle, the primary role of citric acid cycle is to provide NADHs and uh, produce ATP or GTP, correct? So when the cell is in high energy demands, citric acid cycle go on, correct? Means if we take vice versa of this line, it means that when cell already has high amount of ATP, cells do not require to continue with the citric acid cycle because we do not require more NADHs, we do not require more ATPs. So all the allosteric enzymes of citric acid cycle are inhibited by high concentration of ATP, correct? Okay, let's discuss about the binding of the activators on isocitrate dehydrogenase. The binding of any one of this activator on this enzyme is mutually cooperative, means binding of one molecule eases the binding of the other correct we have discussed this type of cooperative binding when we were discussing hemoglobin in the protein section okay now come to the nadh how nadh is inhibitor of this enzyme because it is structurally very much uh, similar with the nad plus so it directly displaces NAD plus and role uh, plays a role of a competitive inhibitor of this enzyme, correct? And obviously we discussed about ATP that it plays a inhibitory role, correct? Coming to the second control point, uh, which is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. Why this enzyme plays inhibitory role? The first reason is that it has high negative delta G. And the second reason is that it is very much similar to the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, correct? So both the enzymes are very, very similar in their structures and functions. So uh, this will also play a regulatory role. And this enzyme is inhibited by feedback inhibition, which is inhibition of the enzyme by its own products. So succinyl coenzyme A and NADH are the product of this reaction. So it is inhibited by these products and obviously by high energy charge of the cell, correct? The third control point, which is actually the first reaction of citric acid cycle is citrate synthase, correct? And uh, not in mammals, but in many bacteria, this is also a control point and it is also inhibited by feedback inhibition by its uh, product, which is citrate. 
and obviously uh, ATP is an allosteric inhibitor, correct? So we have discussed about the three allosteric enzymes of citric acid cycle. Now there are some other inhibitors of citric acid cycle also and which inhibit its various enzymes like aconitase. It is inhibited by fluoroacetate which is a plant toxin. Alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, this one, it is also affected by arsenide, correct? And succinate dehydrogenase, malonate is a competitive inhibitor of this enzyme, correct? So this is all about the regulation of citric acid cycle. You know, Dr. Hans Krepp, who discovered the citric acid cycle, got a Nobel Prize for his uh, very uh, noble discovery because it is because of uh, his discovery you might get an idea about the ATP, about the various intermediate forms and the function of various intermediates like the chart which is uh, the uh, flow chart which is here on this slide. It shows that citric acid cycle intermediates do not only require for generation of ATP rather its intermediates has many bidirectional or multidirectional roles like citrate it is required for fatty acid and sterol synthesis like alpha ketoglutarate it is easily convertible into glutamate by transamination reaction which give rise to the generation of amino acids and purines succinyl coenzyme a on the other hand forms porphyrin heme and chlorophyll and oxaloacetate uh, it has many functions like when uh, your blood glucose level is low it is required for gluconeogenesis or to start gluconeogenesis to form glucose and also to generate various other amino acids purines and pyrimidines so citric acid cycle is not just important for generation of atp Rather, it is a source of many biosynthetic precursors and on the basis of this, it is, uh, it is, it is known as, um, it, it is known as that this cycle has amphibolic nature. Amphi, whenever this term comes, amphi means both. Since we are studying metabolism, amphi means keta and anabolism. How catabolism? Because we have started with a one molecule of glucose in glycolysis and in when the glycolysis ends you get a three carbon moiety pyruvate correct but when pyruvate undergoes citric acid cycle it is only there the one molecule of glucose completely oxidizes into two molecules of carbon dioxide correct so the process of catabolism completes in citric acid cycle that's why it is catabolic in nature and anabolic how anabolic because we have just discussed that it is required for generation of various biosynthetic precursors that shows anabolism and that's why it is amphibolic in nature and we have discussed all the intermediates what are, what are their roles in the previous slide correct now this is not the end of the property of citric acid cycle intermediates rather uh, I want to introduce you with a new term which is anaplerotic or fill up reactions. Do you know um, citric acid cycle is a cycle cyclic form correct it is not just the open linear form as gly glycolysis. So if any of the intermediate of the citric acid cycle becomes low then what will happen the cycle will not complete the oxaloacetate will not generate and further a start of citric acid cycle halts and how it occurs or how it can happen just go to the previous slide this one suppose citric acid cycle is going on a full speed and suddenly your body required generation of amino acids, purines and pyrimidines, correct? So oxaloacetate has its major role to, uh, in the generation of aspartate because body is in high need of 
amino acids rather than to produce ATP. Correct? So as soon as oxaloacetate generates, it consumes in the formation of amino acids. As soon as it generates, it consumes in the formation of purines and pyrimidines. So what will actually happen in the cycle? In this cycle, the place of oxaloacetate becomes empty. So this is how acetate has lost its companion to form its first intermediate or citrate, correct? So citric acid cycle will halt here if oxaloacetate cannot regenerate, correct? And why regeneration is required? Obviously, your body will require ATP after some time. So after some time, you will require energy also. And before that time, your body was in high need for another amino acids and purines and pyrimidines, correct? So your body needs to synthesize oxaloacetate from uh, acetyl coenzyme A, correct? But mammals lack the enzyme for the conversion of acetyl coenzyme A back to oxaloacetate. But production of oxaloacetate is necessary to resume the citric acid cycle. So this is the time when mitochondrial enzyme pyruvate carboxylase comes into role. Okay. It is active in the presence of high amount of acetyl coenzyme A. See, high acetyl coenzyme A indicates that it is not undergoing to the formation of citrate, means oxaloacetate is missing because oxaloacetate is the fellow of uh, acetyl coenzyme A for the first reaction, correct? So pyruvate carboxylase, what does it do? It causes formation of oxaloacetate from pyruvate through consumption of ATP. So this is an example of a fill-up reaction or an anaplerotic reaction of citric acid cycle, correct? So not only this, there are uh, further other reactions or further other fill-up reactions of citric acid cycle and these are conversion of aspartate to oxaloacetate, conversion of glutamate to alpha ketoglutarate and beta oxidation of fatty acids which leads to formation of succinyl coenzyme A and conversion of succinate to fumarate, correct? These are all the fill-up reactions of this cycle. And now finally, we are going to end up here on the next generation of ATP, which we discussed in the previous lecture also. But in the previous lecture, we have started from pyruvic acid to the uh, oxidative phosphorylation of the electron transport chain and we calculated 30 ATP. So, uh, if you calculate from the glycolysis, there is two more direct ATP and two more NADHs and one NADH is equal to three ATP. So two NADHs give rise to six ATP. So six plus two is equal eight ATP in total, correct? Keep in mind that I have used three equivalent for NADH and two equivalent for FADH2 for this calculation. But in most of the books, it is written that uh, NADH gives 2.5 ATP approx and FADH2 give approx um, 1.5 ATP. So if you require that, you can calculate per those equivalents. So here I am going to end this lecture and in the next video, we will discuss about the questions of metabolism from glycolysis to PDH to citric acid cycle. So keep revise all those lectures very thoroughly. Happy learning.